Good afternoon. Uh, I'm uh, Shankar Krishnan. I'm the chair for biomedical engineering here at Wentworth. Uh, I'm really pleased to welcome all of you this afternoon. I see there are many multiple events taking place at the same time. Uh, but I'd like to thank uh, Kelly Parrish for arranging this uh, faculty lecture series. She's outstanding. She's standing outside. <laughs> So uh, I, I'm really pleased to introduce uh, Dr. Wei Wei Li. Uh, she is actually the first faculty we hired in our new biomedical engineering program. We started our program in 2011. We have graduated two batches of students. The third batch is uh, at the senior level now. So Dr. Li joined us in 2012, and uh, her bachelor's degree is from Tsinghua University in China, which is, you know, almost like MIT, is very difficult to get into, and uh, uh, I had actually visited Tsinghua and met some of her advisors over there. Uh, she subsequently got her degree from uh, Tulane University, PhD in biomedical engineering. Uh, it was an exciting time, you know, some of you have heard of uh, Hurricane Katrina, right? <laughs> so she was during that time, I don't think she cost it, you know. You know, but uh, she was there in New Orleans, and uh, then she came to uh, Massachusetts. She was at Beth Israel Hospital and at Mass General Hospital, and then we recruited her, and she has taught you know, several courses uh, in biomedical engineering, including circuit design and electronics and biomedical electronics and instrumentation, medical devices, medical informatics, and telemedicine. And uh, she continues to be a you know, very strong uh, supporter of biomedical engineering. And uh, I'm really pleased that uh, she agreed to give this talk. You know. She can talk on many topics, but uh, she picked uh, sleep. You know. Then I remembered when I was an undergrad, you know, I saw a slogan in the hallway. And it said, <clears throat> work, I mean, they wanted to create all these careers. And they talked about work. They said, work eight hours and sleep eight hours, but not the same eight hours. <laughs> So uh, sleep is a very complex thing. It is a phenomenon or it's a state of uh, mind and body. You know, there is things about uh, wakefulness, consciousness, and a uh, lot of interesting things such as uh, uh, somnia, insomnia, polysomnia, and so on. And we, we really don't, uh, you know, fully understand sleep till, till now. You know, it is... We sleep maybe a third of our life, you know? <laughs> right? But uh, I think there is a lot of research going on, and uh, I, I'm really pleased to uh, welcome Dr. Lee to give her, her talk on this uh, nonlinear analysis of uh, sleep-associated physiological signals. So please join me in welcoming Dr. Lee. Good afternoon. Thank you for coming. And um, here is my topic, nonlinear analysis of sleep. Um, why it doesn't work? OK. OK. <laughs> Works. OK. So um, sleep is, as um, uh, Shankar said, a third of our life spent in sleep. But sleep disturbance is very common. So the data you can see here show that 15% to 70, uh, 35% adult has population, the, the adult population has their sleep disturbance. If you don't believe, we can do a survey here now. <laughs> and, um, but and also the sleep disturbance result is severe. If you look at the data here, so compare, like, they did a study a um, like, long time ago, but it's similar now that the sleep disturbance is related to their major depression, anxiety, and uh, alcohol abuse even, or drug abuse. So if you have good sleep, you have much less chance to get like depression or anxiety. So it's common, dis like, sleep disturbance is common, and result is um, severe. So how we evaluate our sleep quality. So you can see here how they think it's good sleep or not good sleep, how they qualify that. 
or evaluate that. So there are two ways to qualify, um, like evaluate or measure the sleep quality. One is pure subjective. I don't know if you heard about this um, questionnaire. One is Pittsburgh Sleep Quality Index. And the other is Insomnia Severity Index. And you have another is AIS. So these are all like subjective um, way to evaluate sleep. They basically based on a series of questions. You answer the question, you get a score. Less than five, you get good sleep quality. If you are greater than five, you get poor sleep quality. So these are all based on the questions. And that's not good enough, right? So then uh, the golden standard for sleep quality measurement in uh, clinic, clinic is PSG, we call it polysomnography. And that is how they connect all the electrode to the body. And seen here, they said, okay, Mrs. Tully, we want you to relax and get a good night's sleep, and we will evaluate any sleep issues that you have. Can you sleep with all the electrodes on your body? <laughs> so that's a kind of joke, right? But that's the uh, truth, reality. If you want to get a sleep study, right, then you need to go to the sleep center, stay there overnight, hook up all the electrodes, and then lay down there. Maybe you get worse sleep. Okay, so let's see what exactly they do in the PSG. So PSG is actually a bunch of different measurement to the body signals, about the body signals. First, it measures the brain activities, the EEG. So this is the EEG picture, shows all the electrode hookup on the head. Basically, they measure the brain activities. Then it also measures the eye movement. Why eye movement? I think you all know maybe it's a rapid eye, like moment, like movement, like when you sleep, you have RAM period, rapid eye movement period. So that is used to track your eye movement. Then it also measure the muscle activities. So muscle activities, um, here, this is used to measure muscle activities. So why they put into like on the chain? The reason they put on the chain they use the uh, EMG to monitor the sleep is they want to see how long it took for a person to fall asleep. Usually when they fall asleep, their tension relaxed. So the muscle will be re released or relaxed. So the EMG will show a clear signal when they fall asleep. This is a common place to measure EMG. If you have like, um, like sleepless leg syndrome, they also measure EMG from the legs to see how their sleep pattern. So this is EMG. Then we have ECG. ECG is like here. He's hook up the ECG to the uh, chest of the patient. So ECG, normally in clinic, they have 12 leads of ECG. But in PSG, usually they just put one lead or two lead. That is used to measure their um, heart rate. Heart rate, um, and then uh, the heart rate. If you um, heard about that, people during the heart, during their sleep, you will have a dip. So that's a normal, healthy pattern. And if you don't have dip, that is um, you have some issue with the heart. So that's the reason they measure the heart rate. And then they also measure their airflow your breathing. So s people have a sleep apnea, have like um, this sleep apnea issue or obstructive lung disease. They may need to monitor your um, respiratory um, health, health condition. So they usually use the nasal oral sensors like here. They measure your airflow, use some pressure sensor or use some temperature sensor. Temperature sensor is you, like, when you breathe out, the air is hot. Breathe in, the air is cold. So they can also use to measure the pattern of sleep. 
the, uh, the breathing. And then you have respiratory effort. Respiratory effort is like how we can breathe. We breathe because we open our chest, right? And then we have the negative pressure inside compared to the atmosphere pressure. So how much you can open your chest? That is your effort of breathing. So they also hook up their um, like elastomeric plethysmography, or you can use impedance on plethysmography. These are different methods you can measure how like, your chest moves. Then more things. Oxygen saturation, they use a pulse oximeter hook up um, here in the finger. And then you have snoring, even like you can measure their snoring. How they measure that? Just put a microphone in your neck, on your neck. See, so many things, right? This actually is a course of biomedical, and, uh, biomedical electronics and instrumentation class. <laughs> we cover all those in the class of instrumentations. The mechanism, why we measure that, how to analyze the data. So the PSG measure all those. And this is an, a lot, even more. It's more mess here. Can you read these the signals? These are all come from what we measure here. These are the PSG recordings. The first two line is the EOG, that is eye movement. Then the next few lines, these are the EEG. Then here, these are chin muscle movement, EMG. Then you have, um, you have ECG, this is ECG. Then you have the, um, the, um, ox the ox ox oxygen saturations. Then you have the um, pulse rate. You have the here chest. These are chest and abdomen um, plethysmograph to see your um, to see your respiration effort. And then you have positions. They also need to have position movement. Then you have the ETCO2 and the tidal carbon dioxide. So, so many data is recorded during their sleep in the sleep center. A mess, okay? And then how to analyze those, those data? So even though, even though our technology is so good now, but in sleep, like sleep study, it's still based on like decades ago, the method based on decades ago. They are still based on the visual reading and the manual scoring in clinic. So the doctors, their time is so valuable, so they have a special career, right? Somebody just to read their sleep data, sleep graphs. So how to explain that? Even though we have all, many, all those data, the major signals they read is still based on the ECG. So here you can see several different ECG signals. The first ECG signal is alpha waves. These are the alpha waves um, related to the relaxed wake for before you fall asleep. So this is still wake period. And then if you have these alpha waves start to disappear and more slow wave kick in, these um, Theta waves, these are called theta waves. These waves indicate you start to fall, you start fall asleep. Then this is in clinic, they call stage one sleep. Then you come to stage two sleep. Stage two sleep, they are, um, has the characteristic of these sleep spindles. We call sleep spindles. Then also have K complex, if they're Data readers, they found, okay, they have a few of these K-complex or spindles come into the signal, then they will character, um, like group that in stage two. They will think that's stage two. The final, if you have more of these K-complex coming and gradually transit to this delta wave, this is finally comes to the stage three. In the past, they again 
divide that into stage three and four, but now they combine three, stage three and four, and all in this group. This group is um, considered as restorative sleep. That is deep sleep. That is sleep we want, okay? So this is PSG signal analysis, all based on the visual readings. This is the their, um, report. Usually the sleeper readers, they will give the doctors. So this is, um, this shows every grid, this is 30 seconds. And in these 30 seconds, they will sh tell you, okay, how long it's in the arouse period or wake or rapid eye movement. The rapid eye movement basically mostly um, is um, from the EOG. Then stage one, stage two, stage three. And um, see these eye movement correspond to the rapid eye movement period. And this graph is a good sleeper's sleep pattern. And this is the um, patient with insomnia. So you will see that um, the period seems like um, the stage three, they have less stage three and more like um, discrete pattern. This is more solid, this is like disturbed. You will see pretty clear. So this is a relative, a good picture shows, it can tell if he's a good sleeper or with insomnia. Worst thing is, studies show that when the patient report they have bad sleep, but PSG doesn't really show it. So this study shows that um, this is from based on the subjective evaluation of their sleep. They can, the two group, the two group does not have um, much difference of the patient's um, demographic or clinical characteristics. But from their sleep diary, you will see there's good sleep patient and insomnia patient. They are very different according to their sleep diary. But from PSG value, actually the PSG recording through all this hard work, they don't show much like, significant difference between the good sleeper and insomnia. So we can see that PSG, not only it requires so much work, but it still have problems. Sleep quality do not agree with sleep quality. Like sleep quality does not agree with sleep quantity. Sleep quantity does not agree with sleep quality. Okay, the sleep quantity is measured through PSG. Quality is evaluated by patient's diary. So what's the solution? Um, here is a um, group from BI. So this is CK, CK Peng, and this is um, Robert, and then two other professors. So I'm currently work with Dr. Peng and uh, um, Robert. They are, um, he's a sleeper expert. He's uh, um, doing their study about other uh, algorithms. So they create a method called cardiopulmonary coupling analysis. It's called CPC. So they have this method um, they, they created and they actually, they started that in 2005. They have that method already patented and uh, have the device created and they have done many, many um, clinical trials and it shows very good result. So what they did is, in that method, is they just use one ECG recording, use one lead, put in the chest, and record the ECG signal. This is the only signal they record. And in this signal, if you can calculate, this is all wave. In the ECG, this is all wave, all wave, all wave. So all wave, all our interval, if you plot the RR interval to a signal, to a trace, 
It is called heart rate variability. So from the ECG itself, they can find the heart rate variability. Also, from the envelope of the ECG signal, they, come, they can get the um, respiratory system. When you're breathing, it will modulate the ECG peaks. So from the ECG signal, based on one lead ECG, they get two signals. One is heart rate variability, one is the respiratory signals. So this is uh, ECG-derived respiratory signals. So what's, what they do is you, they get two signals. One is heart rate variability, one is respiratory signal. And they do FFT. They find the spectrum of these signals. This is a spectrum from the heart rate variability. So from, this is from the spectrum of the heart rate variability. This is a spectrum from the respiratory waves. So based on these two spectrums, they do the cross-spectrum calculations. And they also do the coherence. And then they do the product, do the multiplication of the two Basically, for each time moment, you can get one, like at each time, you will get one trace like this, one trace like this, one right trace like this. Then plot everything there, you will have a plot like this. And y-axis is the frequency. Frequency from low zero to frequency 0.4 here. And this is timing. So with this plot, you can see um, the frequency, the spectrum distribution along the night at different frequencies. Studies show that unstable sleep is associated with these low frequency coupling. If you have more frequency coupling, low frequency coupling here, that means the patient get more unstable sleep. And the stable sleep is more associated with high frequency coupling. So if there's more high frequency events happen here, that means they have good, stable, steep sleep. And then the RAM, RAM or wake associated with the very low frequency coupling. So from that graph, we can find unstable sleep, stable sleep, or RAM sleep. So that is, that make the um, measurement so simple. You don't need to hook up so many things. You just one ECG. You can bring the ECG monitor at home, sleep at home. This will not disturb the patient's sleep. And you can, um, then for the analysis, it's all automatic analysis. You don't need to read the whole things through like um, with special um, persons. So what is the applications for that? And um, there are many applications for that. So one study did by Robert Thomas in BI, he found that um, they do the obstructive sleep apnea. They can mark the, obstruct the sleep apnea very clearly. So they calculate the result. Then compare to the airflow, you know, they, when they do the clinical trial, they can measure these um, ECG and get these um, CPC result. Then compare to the airflow measured in the uh, nose to see if they have apnea. So they have very well corresponding and low frequency. Um, so the low frequency coupling here solidated one, they're often corresponding to this um, sleep apnea. So one application is to find the sleep apnea. Actually, their device already get um, FDA approval as the medical diagnosis device to uh, study sleep apnea. And um, another application of the CPC is to track the treatment efficacy in sleep apnea. So when people have apnea, you know, they often get their um, mask to supply continuous positive airway pressure so they can help them to breathe. 
So in the patient, in this patient, like in the first four hours, they don't have their treatment, their CP, CPAP treatment. You can see many of these low frequency coupling. So that indicates their sleep quality is, sleep quality is not good and they have sleep uh, apneas. Then the next four hours, they supply with their mask to supply this air, the positive pressure air. And it immediately bring the high frequency coupling up and they start to have very good sleep quality, the stable sleep. And another sleep is um, did by uh, Glory um, in also BI. And he did the Tai Chi training, um, like sleep stability. So this is baseline. And in the Tai Chi group, their sleep quality so the low frequency, low frequency coupling indicate unstable sleep, right? And um, after 12 week, 12 week of Tai Chi, and they show a significant decrease of low frequency coupling. That means they have decreased of this um, unstable sleep. In control group, they actually have increased of unstable sleep. And then another uh, kind of application is insomnia. Insomnia, this is a healthy control. They have all high frequency coupling and they shows very good um, sleep quality. And these also agree with their quality, their personal diary report of sleep quality. But here in the depression person, the high frequency coupling is very few. They have very bad quality. So these are these applications show that CPC actually is a very good way to measure or quantify the sleep and they agree with their um, the personal sleep diary better. And there's a study we are doing and doing now is we uh, I didn't put on here. We are doing a study, measure the element school student to like, let them bring back home some devices to quantify their sleep. And we also take their school test, like math, math um, English, or like, we, are, we did the experiment in China, and the Chinese English math test corresponding to their um, sleep quality. We found that their sleep quality it's especially this deep sleep quality is highly associated with this um, um, the, the, the grade, their English score, especially English score. Why is English score? We, we suspect that because English score, English for Chinese students, these are the new language, okay? So the new language to acquire or learn new language, it's directly related to your sleep quality. For Chinese, it's their culture. They don't have like short-term like result. So they are more based on the culture or other effects. So the sleep quality, they didn't directly affect their Chinese score. And the math, on the other hand, the study, all the studies show that the sports or the uh, genetics, that's more related to the math score. So for the short-term learning, they are more related to these um, um, sleep quality. So that is um, how we can qualify, quantify the start sleep and apply it to different uh, areas. One more thing is um, CK. So we, um, his group, I'm, I'm working with him um, these days. So he used this method, CPC and some other algorithm. Uh, I don't know if you heard about uh, XPRIZE. Um, done in like it's and going it's ten million dollars a prize in um, he entered in the competition and uh, he's uh, the last two two or three groups and uh, hopefully I think he will win the big prize for ten billion dollars 
And um, this is a one key method he used in di diagnose people. So the people, the divide, the competition, uh, uh, tricord, tricord has uh, had this um, competition. So the competition is about create a five pound or less device that can diagnose 10 more devices, 10 more diseases. So with the CPC algorithm itself, it can like, actually with the ECG um, monitor, it can itself can monitor several different diseases like heart uh, arrhythmia, sleep quality, sleep apnea. So that is one of the key technology he used in the device. So the result of the competition will announce, I think, in a couple months. So that is a um, very nice um, me method to, to quantify the study. But in US, though the technology has been there for more than 10 years, in US, it's hard to advance to market it because the sleep doctors don't want to use that. <laughs> it's, it's very hard to like make the people to use that. So it's still you cannot see in Chinese, in, in US market now. And uh, um, doctors want to use that. But in China, lots of people like now we, we try, we already like promote in many hospitals to use that to quantify sleep. But in US still the PSG is a golden standard. Okay, so that is uh, um, the current status of uh, sleep study. Any questions? And uh, um, we can discuss.